Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today, we're going to be talking about Pilot's Watch dials, namely the A dial and the B dial. On our website, we advertise a lot of Pilot's Watches. We say it comes with a you know A type dial or a Type A dial or it comes with a Type B dial, and you can see the differences. But you know, here I wanted to show you what each one is and explain to you kind of where they came from. There's a lot of history online. Uh, some of it's a little bit muddy. Uh, but, you know, I want to try to explain to you what the two dial types are. Not so much the Flieger history, I'll, I'll touch on it a bit, um, but, you know, there's volumes and volumes online about uh, the Flieger history. Uh, but I just wanted to touch on the two dial types. Uh, for my own wrist check for today, I am wearing a Junkers uh, Bauhaus type watch with the uh, Swiss auto movement. And so, Pilot's watches, you know, it, it, once you get into the pilot's watch design, I guess uh, an image comes in your head, easy to read, big numbers, you know, no date, uh, and that's on purpose. Everything is there for the legibility of the pilot to read the dial. Now, you know, these are on pilot's watches for guys flying F-18s or 747s. These were made, you know, for basically for the German Air Force, uh, the Luftwaffe, in the late 30s, early 40s. And this design has become so, you know, predominant in society for pilots' watches that, you know, it, it clearly exists today. Almost every brand makes a watch that, if they don't call it a pilot's watch, it has a similar style to a, a, pilot, a pilot's watch dial. So the characteristics of a pilot's watch, it's clean, it's uncluttered, usually there's no date. Uh, there's no branding across the top of the dial. You know, if it's going to be a true Flieger, uh, Flieger being, I think, the German word for aviator. I use some Google Translate, so I don't know how, how pure the translations are, but it gets the message across, right? So another word for these is, you know, people call them Flieger-style watches. And again, you know, you know, giving a nod to, you know, actually where they did come from. Uh, but nowadays, you know, it's just an iconic style and, you know, it's functional. It's easy. It's an easy to read watch. You know, if you have poor eyesight, uh, this is probably the watch for you. Uh, so just really quickly, you know, back in the 30s and 40s, uh, there were five companies that were sought to make watches uh, for the German Air Force. It was... Uh, you know, these are the names they're known as today. Back then, they were known as different names. Things have changed. But in today's, in today's names, you had uh, Laco, Stova, Wempe, IWC, and uh, Elang and Son. And you can hear, you know, those companies are, are still still around today. Uh, we sell Laco. It's probably, maybe next to Stova, the most affordable one. Uh, it's a made in Germany Flieger with ties to the original manufacturer. So what I want to do is I'll show you, we'll go to the table a little bit later. Um, I want to talk for a bit. This is a, a Type A. You can see it's got the hours around it. You know, easy, easy to read. And then here is your Type B. I'm holding it at an angle because the glare off these crystals is... Uh, where I am now with the lighting is is horrendous, so I'm trying my best uh, to not make it a, a reflection festival. So the two watches I just showed you, uh, both by Laco, they're both 42 millimeter. If we go back to the real Fliegers, the real pilots watches, they were 55 millimeter. Now that, that that's tremendous, yeah, well, uh, you know, probably like that on a large leather strap that went around the pilot's jacket. They were given to the pilot. Uh, by the Air Force or, you know, by the governing body. Uh, they were on loan for the flight. It wasn't the, pi it, it was a pilot's watch, but it wasn't the pilot's watch. The, the pilot didn't get to keep it. Uh, it's basically, it was military equipment. It was loaned to them for the flight. They hacked so they could sync them to a uh, unknown time source. And like I said, they were big. And they were big because, you know, bigger dials are easier to read. Uh, bigger cases because they put pocket watch movements in them. And pocket watches are obviously larger movements. They were extremely accurate movements. They were, you know, almost observer grade chronometers. They were just very good movements, you know, because you needed accuracy. This don't forget, this is in the 40s. This is before courts came around. Uh, so the A dial was, you know, that first one I showed you, the one with just the hours ar around it. Why is it called A dial? I I want to say it's because of aviator dial, um, but I can't really confirm that. And there's not much on it, you know, online. 
Uh, but it's that simple, you know, it's the most simplest simple of all the pilot's watch dials. But the problem with it is that you cannot read the minutes extremely well. It's not an expanded minute scale or, or minute markings. Um, it's good for telling the time. Uh, you know, and just getting back to it again, we're not talking about, you know, pilots flying modern day jets. You know, this is back in the 40s. The aircraft were not exactly as smooth as they are today. Uh, and this was a mean for them to tell time. Uh, but then the Ministry of Air Transport went out to industry, you know, and said, you know, we need a design for a watch. Uh, here's what we kind of think it's going to look like. And then the call was answered. And then that was, again, I'll show this later on the uh, on the table, uh, the birth of the B dial. Uh, you can see it's got, you know, the expanded minutes track. Uh, hours are secondary. They're on the inside. The most important thing on this watch is the minutes. Because this was the watch that's worn by bombers, navigators, observers. Uh, generally, those three terms are kind of pooled together. Uh, you know, when you research them, because uh, if you need to navigate, you know, minutes are of the essence. And hours really probably are secondary. Minutes are important. I guess if you're timing bombing solutions, uh, I guess minutes are important. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to think about the atrocities of war, but, you know, this is what these watches uh, were really designed for. So I want, like I said, what I want to do is I'll go over to the table now and I'll show you just each watch up close. I have two here from Laco. And I have two from Aristo that are in the Flieger style, but they're 47 millimeter. And what I want to do there is to show you what a jump from 42 to 47 does um, in pilot's watch lingo. It really, it's a hell of a, a hell of a big jump in size. And then you can, unfortunately, I don't have any 55s. I don't sell them anymore. Uh, the, but how big the 55 millimeter uh, pilot's watch would have been, uh, you can just think about it. Uh, so let's get over and uh, check out a couple of pilot's watch dials. So like I said, here is the A dial watch from Laco. And again, being Laco, uh, it's even got the inscription on the side that all the Fliegers back then have. FL meaning, you know, for flight, 23 for navigation. Uh, has all the markings on the back. It's kind of like, you know, like military standard equipment. Uh, everything had to have uh, certain kinds of markings on it. But I really wanted to just talk about the dial like I showed you. Uh, so this is your A dial. You can see that the hours are on the track on the outside triangle with two dots for registration at the top, hands, and a second hand. I mean, that's it. There's nothing else to get in the way. Easy to grip crown. Again, this one is at 42, so, you know, you would normally see it at around 45, uh, excuse me, 55, so this is kind of small, and I'll bring up the 47 millimeter Aristo at the end to look at them, but again, this is just your, your, your typical A dial aviator. Uh, of course, it had luminescence. There you go easy to read, extremely easy to read. Uh, you know, they, they did have to see the time in the dark, so this did the trick. Now I'm going to bring up the B dial now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the loom shot since we're already out. So here is the Laco B dial. You notice that the loom is only on the 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, not on the fives. I always thought that was interesting. I've noticed that um, for a long time. I think I'm going to ask Laco. If anybody knows why that is, you know, chime in on the comments down below. I can only assume it's for legibility, uh, but every Laco B dial I've ever seen uh, is like this. So here is the B dial in the light. You can see it's extremely easy to read. The numbers, uh, the minutes along the outside playing prominence. It is the most important thing on the dial if you're a navigator and navigating by waypoints. The hours are secondary on the inside. And if you notice that the hour hand is actually shorter so that it hits that inner tri uh, inner circle uh, for the hours, whereas the minutes hand you know, extends all the way to the marks. Again, we have a, a nice knurled crown. So it's easy to grasp. I've stopped this one um, from running. It's actually, it's actually a hand cranker, I believe. It's not even an auto. Uh, but, you know, it still has the markings on the sides and all that same stuff. Now, I just want to bring up, just for comparison's sake, what a 47 millimeter looks like next to a 42. And, I mean, look at the difference. This is what five, a 5 millimeter difference. Now, a 55 is going to be 8 millimeters larger in diameter than this. I mean, that's tremendous. But you can see how much more legibility the Aristo brings to the table in being a, uh, a larger watch. Now, again... This, you know, Aristo was not a manufacturer of Flieger watches, uh, so they have their name on it, um, made in Germany on the dial, a little more cluttering on the dial, I guess you'll call it. Uh, but, you know, this is a watch that they came out with, I want to say, earlier this year, uh, and it won numerous design awards uh, for, the way it, for the way it is designed. Beautiful strap. Uh, they also make it 
in an A dial. I believe this is the 7H96 and the 7H98. Very simple, plain, beautiful, uh, you know, aged loom on it. But again, you could see if I bring up the 42 millimeter uh, Laco I showed you next to the 47, you can just see what a difference it is. Everything's so much larger. You know, obviously not just the dial, the numbers, the hands. Uh, you know, as you make things increasing in scale, it, it becomes much easier to read. Your resolution between minutes increases. The distance between hash marks increases as the dial increases in size. So being a navigator, uh, that is of obviously of, of utmost importance. So here's the A dial from Laco, and where does the term A dial come from? I honestly do not know. I couldn't find much about it. I want to I wanna hope it's aviator dial and the letter A, but aviator translates to Flieger, so I'm not sure that's it. Maybe it's A dial because it's the first dial type that was invented. I'm uh, not sure. But uh, the, this, again, this is like 1939, 1940. Uh, this is a couple of years later. This is the B dial, and we do know that B comes from the first initial of Beobachter. Beobachter in German is observer. This is the observer watch, navigation watch, bomber watch. All those people need to know the minutes to a high degree of accuracy. So the watch kind of works for all of them, and that is the B-er, which is the B-type the B watch. Beobachter watch, uh, Beobachtung, observation watch. It all means the same thing, uh, and it all gets us to the B dial, which, you know, for being a pilot's watch, is the more cluttered of the two, right? I mean, it's kind of funny. It's the more cluttered of the two, but in sales, it's it's the B dial that outsells the A dial by a decent margin. I would say it's got to be at least two or three to one uh, across, um, at least in Laco. Um, it's such a beautiful look. It really looks great. Now, recently, I don't have any here, but you'll see some Lacos on our website that advertises having a C dial. I can't find any historical significance of that. I do believe it's just Laco, you know, saying, hey, there's an A, there's a B, now we have a C. And the C, they basically say, just has extra functionality, whether it be an offset seconds hand, whether it be a chronograph, any other function that's not really just main time telling, they call it a C dial. Now, I again, I just think that that is their marketing term. I can't confirm it. Um, maybe you know more. But anyway, uh, let's uh, let's wrap this one up. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you Type A and Type B dials uh, from Pilot's Watches. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel if you've not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.